Hello and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And in this episode, we are going to bombard our enemies with missiles from afar. It is going to be entertaining and hopefully exciting as we are going to build our own missiles that are going to be run off of a script and they're going to fly through the air and hopefully impact the enemy's turrets taking out all of their defenses so that I can move in with my hand weapons and uh, take out any interior defenses room by room to salvage all of their goodies. But let's get started here. So since last episode I went and found uh, this oasis. This was very near the at the end of the episode there was the unknown signal off in the distance. I went and got that, noticed the oasis off to the side, so I parked here overnight as we always need more ice. It is just not an issue, like not an issue that I ever resolve. We always will need more ice, we'll always need more power, as the problem with a mobile grid means no wind power, which means no consistent power, and no ability to put up like a, uh, a giant solar panel set in order to uh, get enough power overnight or sorry, get enough power during the day that you can last all night as well. So, ice is always useful. And plus we're in Oasis, we got a little bit more organic matter, as we do need to eat as my character is getting thirsty. I'm a thirsty boy. So, we need water. And where be some water and tofu for myself? Tofu, water, there we go. Excellent. It's a little early in the morning, but we might as well get rolling as we've got a few kilometers to drive into the resource processing station and we need to talk about what we're going to be doing today. So the script that I'm going to be using is RDAV's Missile Guidance Script. If I'm saying that correctly, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. But the purpose behind the script is for you to make your own custom missiles then using the script give them some targeting information from a turret and then let those missiles do their work because this is entirely new to me i've never really used his script beyond right before i filmed this i went and spent maybe 20 minutes half an hour screwing around in a testing world just being like how do I get this to fire? Okay, it fired. I think I've got it. So now I can make the video. You know, you don't want to see me just like making a video with me reading a manual on how to do something. You want to see me do it. I'll fumble around a little bit with it. We'll probably have some issues that we need to figure out, but at least I know what I'm doing somewhat. But we need to get over to this resource processing station. And if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the larger stations in the sort of ground pack in terms of like the amount of stuff that we'll be able to take from it as I need stuff. My thoughts here is either the we're going to do one of two things, either we're going to vastly improve the, the wheelbase for the trailer and then add another trailer to that or we're actually going to build a large grid from all of this salvage and make a new rover uh, I'd like to keep the bison intact for the entire playthrough but the trailer could be salvaged at the, the end of the rebuild so that because we'll be using the large grid. We don't need it anymore. We can just have the bison as its own thing. Uh, but first things first, we need to get through this bullshit here and get down this hill, which I think is doable. Not there. Uh, maybe here. Maybe right where this cobalt is. And I'm not going to mark up the cobalt because I already have enough cobalt and I don't really care for it right now. I am not capable of turning right now. I am being all jackknifed up. The one problem with having those wheels on the front of the trailer is that they, uh, 
They cause issues. Yeah, I'm just all jackknifed. I just gotta get off this, uh, this ridge, hopefully straighten out a bit, pull away this direction, make a nice wide turn, and get myself straightened back out. There we go. Okay, now that I'm straight, I can make a nice wide turn and make a new run up to that area. And... Oh, come on. Can't I go forward here? There we go. Up and over. And I should be okay to drive down this. Excellent. So this is going to be pretty costly in terms of the amount of resources that I need to produce uh, to, to do this. But it's going to be worth it. There is a lot of stuff to salvage from this station. Come on, Bison. Climb the hill. You can do it. You can do it, girl. Yeah. Get up that hill. Good girl. And ooh, there's the sun coming up. Beautiful. We'll get some solar power as we are parked up, waiting for uh, our missiles to destroy the station. So there's the resource processing station. It is over that ridge line there. However, what I'm wanting to do is get to a location where I am at the same level or possibly even higher than it, as that would make the, the firing arc for my missiles be even better. So therefore, I'm heading off to the left here in order to get into these mountains and... Uh, hopefully find that good firing position. Uh, key thing to be, which we should... Well, we can stop up right here. We are going to be using the Mod Designator's turret. And I need a large shield too. Alright, I need to turn you back into... Assembling, instead of disassembling. Oh, there we go. This Designator turret is just a wonderful little mod that all it does... He shoots a little laser beam out towards the enemy. Can I get on top of my rover? Is a very good question. Yeah, it's a couple things, a couple steps to get up here. It just shoots a little laser beam at the enemy. Doesn't do any damage, but has a really long range, so that you can sit back outside of their 800 meter range for their turrets and designate targets for this thing to shoot to shit. Which is exactly what we want to do in the mod designated turret. So that little guy, park up here, right here at the top, we can have up to a thousand meters, so a whole kilometer of arming radius. And we'll tell it to target stations, large ships, should be good. And we also have these, I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it, but we have the smart turrets on here as well so we'll see if we can use that and how those work but for now we'll just target stations and it should shoot at turrets hopefully mostly and that way we can save our uh, you know, save our missiles for not shooting at you know enemy production structures or power structures because I want to salvage those. I want to plug in the ship and steal their power. I don't want to destroy their power. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, one other change I did since last episode. You can see it there on the side of the rovers back here. I added a couple more hydrogen tanks. And it's two on each side. So there is four, uh, eight more... No, wait. Four more hydrogen tanks. Which means that we just have more hydrogen at any one time and that's a good thing because the hydrogen tank um, if I remember correctly it doesn't have any physics in terms of the amount of hydrogen in it and ooh, there she is let's take a look uh, I don't really need to control my Gatling turret anymore because I've got the designator turret which has got better um, aiming god damn it come on ship stop rolling backwards so we can get up here, we can control the designator turret, and 
can zoom in. Oh, baby, that's a big place. Oh, yeah. We'll be taking that out. So because hydrogen tanks have no physics in the sense of, like, the amount of hydrogen are, that's in them would make them way heavier. In real life, that would be true. But in the game, that is not. So it's good to have hydrogen in tanks rather than ice. Oh, nickel. Uh, because it's just less weight, which means less stuff I need to move around, which is easier for my rover to handle. Uh, I don't have the space at the moment to do a large hydrogen tank anywhere on here. That may change after if I add another trailer or not. But, or I expand that trailer back there. But at least now I have double the amount of hydrogen in tanks as I did before. And that should be pretty soon. We're getting to our 15% there for our batteries. And that will mean that our, our engines will kick on and we'll be running on those until we get back up to 75% power. Uh, which we should see basically, like right now you can see I've got like 15 minutes, 10 minutes of power if I'm on full drive here. As soon as that clicks and it, the engines kick on, it'll be like three days of power because that's how it works but you should be able to tell instantly all right so oh, oh more more nickel well how about that just nickel everywhere but we we're 1.93 kilometers away we should be able to get to a nice spot. Their turrets, their large grid Gatlings, should go to 800 meters at their maximum range. I have a one kilometer spotter, so as long as I stay within that 200 meter band, I should be able to spot them while not taking any return fire. And my hope is that it looks like we could probably get a nice spot somewhere over here where I am under a kilometer. Um, let's get out and mark this cobalt. It's easier than trying to back up and reposition right now. Cobalt's right there. Thank you. Yep. So that's 1.43. Uh, looks like there might be some nice flat area ahead of me here. The real question will be is when does my little designator turret start aiming at them? And oh, you can see it. I've gone up to 60 years of power. So I've clicked over and my batteries are now recharging. Fully recharged in two hours. My engines are running. My hydrogen is going down, so we are now running on our hydrogen again. Uh, to have my O2H2s off for the moment, and I should check. That is simply my single O2H2 generators. O2H2 generators. One hundred kilometers. Because that's just a single block. I should make that the, the, the group of blocks to toggle them on and off. That way I can do both of them. Um, but is the turret... Oh, it's targeting! It's targeting! It's very faint, but you can see the little faint green line. And now, it's not something I'd, I, I would do a lot, but you can see where the target is. I'm just going to grab the spectator camera from where it was when I was taking pictures for the thumbnail for, for last time. And I just want to show off this turret. And how it works so if I fly over here we can see that little green targeting line if we fly along it all the way down here we can see that it is targeting a turret so there is the bison one kilometer away just at the very very edge of targeting range however it is in range so that means that this will feed the targeting information to any missile that I make, and we could hit that target. I'm gonna move just a tiny bit closer, just so that, you know, 
we're not going to lose that target for any reason. And we're going to park up here. And we're going to leave the rover here. We're going to fire all of our missiles from this location. So, now we have to build missiles. I'm going to make another hot bar here just for building missiles. Uh, we're going to need our welder, probably, probably our grinder, maybe. But then armor block. These things will be hydrogen based as if I try to make them out of atmospheric thrusters, you can see that it has 600 kilowatts of usage. If I put on a full battery, that's fine for megawatts. However, if I put on a small battery, and if I just slap this on without actually building it up somewhere, and we take a look for the small battery, maximum output is only 200 kilowatts. So that small battery there would only be able to service one-third a thruster. So either I put on a large battery, which is a lot of resources, or I put on a hydrogen thruster using some way to get some hydrogen to it and then detach it, fire the missile, explode, rebuild it, put a little hydrogen into it, fire the missile again. Because then I can have thruster I need with a uh, hydrogen thruster. And that would work. Cool. So I need small conveyors. I do need a small, a small battery. And my build planner here needs none of that. Because there needs to be some power on there. Uh, compared to a large battery, we're saving those 18 power cells per. And power cell, for me, out of the assembler, yeah, it's a decent amount of uh, nickel and iron that I don't need to to use. So we'll see if this... I think this is the most economical option. Uh, first thing is I believe we need to get a bunch of conveyors, a bunch of tubes, as... I'm not sure where to put this in permanently, but I think for now, at least temporarily, uh, if we look at where we have conveyor port access... and Oh, my God, I actually have a little bit of damage here. Uh oh looks like I bumped into something. I could, and I believe that there is, if I um, if I remember my design and I look here with the spectator cam, I believe there is some ports behind some of my, my panels. That's a battery there. You can sort of see the internals of the, the, sh the rover here. There's, see, there's a port right here and a port right here for these hydrogen engines. So it could be that in the future I have essentially a missile right off the side, on either side, off of those hydrogen um, hydrogen tanks. I do have, of course, the port these guys are plugged into. Uh, and then up here I have a couple of ports that I could have access to if I punched out right there. I could pull out a, a, a port and have a missile on the side of the, the rover here on the left. Um, but for now, just for testing, I think I'm going to pull out from our food production. We're just going to pull out a straight line of conveyor tubes. And then we'll build a little turret, like a missile mount here, and we'll use that for our initial bombardment. And then if I want to refine that, I can do that later. Uh, I could also probably, because I've got stuff here, I could probably add like a missile on either side of the... Uh, the lightning rod and then fire missiles from the back there which would work as well so let's do that so we're going to grab the tube and zip it on out here and 
Yeah, sure. That'll be enough. Grab some armor blocks because we're going to make a little space to work. A couple flat areas there. That way I can get up and get right to it and make this jump a little bit easier if I you know, didn't screw it up. Get the small conveyor tubes out. <laughs> Excellent. So then on here is going to be a... Is this the missile itself? No, we need a small conveyor and then another small conveyor. So the reason why I'm doing that is at some point I'm going to have to cut something off or do something to remove a portion of this thing so that the missile can detach and fire. The missile will detach with a merge block and I'm going to use a uh, small grid mega bog pack um, one by one merge block which would be, you know, save on resources and I'm just getting knocked off the edge there. Come on, let me up. Let me onto that wheel, damn it. There we go. So on the top here, I'm going to want this one facing in there? No. Here? I'm, I'm going to want a tank on this, for sure. A little hydrogen tank. And it's going to go on top. I need to get a little bit higher here. And not a full thing, I just need a half slope here. There we go. That's what I needed. That gives me access. So just like that, we'll put a little thing there. On the side here, I guess, we'll put a merge and a merge facing each other. And hopefully that means that we will be able to get those merges to work together. Hydrogen engine. I'm going to want a pair of the small ones. Cue those up. We're going to need a gyro. And we're also going to need a new programmable block. And we need to throw that down uh, probably on the arm here, or just uh, somewhere on the deck for now. And then we'll move it after we're done experimenting. We'll slap it right down here. Need our, just need our display. Get that, uh... Yeah, hold on. Come on, make the display. Survival kit? Why is survival kit making everything? Assembler can help too, you know. I'll set it to make some random components. I'll use them up later. Alright, display should be done. Yes, there we go. We got the programmable block. Uh, ooh, I don't know if this is going to work if it's on the other grid. I don't know. We'll find out. We shall figure this out. So the missile... We got RDAV's guided missile script. We need to can do everything that is on the turret is contains A on the turret. That includes, uh, sorry, on the missile. That includes any of the turrets related to it. So that we need to name our, our designator A so that it knows it's using that as its designator turret. Programmable block, we're going to call this Program Missile. As well, anything we build there, the two merge blocks, all that kind of stuff, will, will need to be called A in order for the, uh, the script to properly understand what is going on and use them for the missile. Shift down there. Let me do this one. Stuff in the small tank. Those are merged. Very good. Uh, eh. Might be building this incorrectly. Huh. 
I think I might need to run out an armor armor line as well. Let's grab some armor blocks. I think I might have done a boo-boo. And that merge block is just going to be an annoyance. Now just run out an armor block line. I'll figure something out. You know, I'm just experimenting. I'm learning how to do this. There, that armor block is now connected back to the rover. Separate from these, uh, these tubes. So when I, I was, the point was, is I wanted to be able to grind that off, that conveyor, and I didn't think about this. I want to grind that conveyor off, and then the missile flies away. Detaching from this merge. Da -da -da -da. Let's see. Small conveyor. I don't need any more merges. I need my small conveyors back. Got everything I need to make another small conveyor. We shall go right there. Small hydrogen engines. Small thruster. One and two. And I believe I can pull things from here, can't I? Yes. I believe something that the small grid mega med mod pack did is it made it so that uh, oh, I need four metal grids is all components can go through all sizes of things because um, before you can pull like say large steel tubes through the small conveyor ports and this is only connected to the back through the small conveyor ports but I'm able to pull all these resources through so I believe that they uh, they did something to that to make life a little bit easier uh, I need large steel tube one more do I have a large steel tube? I don't so I need to queue up a single large steel tube. So like a large steel tube, if I, rem if I remember correctly, should not go through here, but I'm getting my items when I right click. So that means that it's working. Nice metal grid there. There's a large steel tube for that hydrogen tank. That tank is not getting any hydrogen because my hydrogen generators are off currently so we will turn them on as we are out of hydrogen anyway we need to start running on the hydrogen this little thing here we can stockpile a bit no stockpile hydrogen come on these guys should be getting a little bit of hydrogen My O2 issue generators are on. They're outputting 100 liters. Oh, is it probably because the engines are... Uh, engines are sucking up at all. Okay, so I need to kill my engines for a little bit here. We'll turn the, the ship refueler off so that I can manually toggle my engines off. And the... Oh, so paddles 100%. Very nice. We shall turn our refineries off so we're not killing all of our power. And our tank, our hydrogen tank, should be the only thing. Small hydrogen tank should be filling up until the engine's kicked back on. Stockpile. There we go. At least now the hydrogen won't be taken out of this thing. Excellent. So our little hydrogen tanks. Those are all empty. This one's getting a little bit of fuel into it. Our thrusters here are active. And we just need a small gyro. Again, I don't know why everything's being made out of the survival kit, but... Oh well. I just need... Large steel tube and instructing component. Why aren't you being made automatically in the freaking assembler? Come on, assembler, make me a large steel tube. Getting the survival kit. I just need the construction component. Stop building the freaking steel plates. Two, one, zero. There we go. Got everything I need. <gasps> So then, a gyroscope. Uh, 
and a small battery on this thing to keep it fueled. And realistically, that's done. That missile will fly. Uh, so we'll probably want to give that a little bit of a test here. And of course, I'll reposition where I'm doing my merges after this, and I'll put it over on the other side. Because then I can, I can do this better. So we need to get into our rover. Keep it all nice and parked up. And there is... Uh, what am I one advanced rotor? Where the hell is that? Oh, that's on the back of the thing. Uh, so our one by one merge block needs to be A. So does this need to be. We have our new gyroscope. That needs to be A. The small battery is there. It doesn't need any power because it's only going to last for like 10 seconds in the air. The hydrogen thrusters, the two of those, need to be this A. The hydrogen tank needs to be that. And I believe that is everything. So we've renamed that, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. So that should be everything that this needs, if I am not mistaken. The turret is also renamed A. As we have uh, the the designator turret, so this is our missile here. So what we should, the only thing we need to do now, is set up a uh, program from the missile. Go run with fire, and that's it. So that should work. If I haven't done anything incorrectly, which I might have, which of course is something that I could do. But since this could work, I think we should throw a warhead or two on this thing. Which need explosives. I need two explosives. Do I have the ability to make explosives? I do. So I'll grab a few warheads here worth of materials. That'll build up. Meanwhile, the, I do have steel plate, a bunch of extra, so I'll grab some light armor blocks. And we could make a little bit of a nose cone for this thing. Uh, it won't be perfect, but we can sort of fill this in a little bit. Uh, how much hydrogen do you have? Oh, you're at 100%. Nice. I keep you stockpiled right until I launch you. So, I'm not sure if I need to do full blocks on this side. Or if I can go back and just go, like, say, slaps. And we'll just toggle you little thrusters off right into the last moment. <laughs> Building missiles is fun. Oh, and also I could just separate this now. By cutting off the small conveyor. There. Now it's not conveyored in. So... It's not being... Like, the hydrogen from it isn't being stolen by the rest of the base. Go back to this. Get our warhead. Oh, three warheads? Sure. Something like that is probably fine. Yup. Oh, God, I cleared the entire thing. Come on, get me up here. Get me onto my little thing. I want to shoot. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, two warheads. Two warheads seems decent. 
we'll get those welded up. And hopefully I'll, uh, w once I figure this out, this is just the testing stream of actually building a missile and figuring out how to do this. Next time, next episode will be, will be me like mass bombarding it because I'll set up something where I have a, a, a printer essentially for these and I'll have a, a blueprint set up and um, a welder out here so that I am welding these constantly and I just sort of like just fire weld another one fire weld another one and I can go through this much faster than this uh, ugh, lengthy process uh, but eh, might as well do a little bit of armor shaping because why not get those missile bits there don't, don't bounce me off of it uh, it's so complicated to get on top of this thing there we go. And then... I guess full block? Probably be the safest for it. Although realistically, it's not going to take much missile fire for this thing to uh, get destroyed. And it's only really going to be in the air for like 10 seconds. I'm doing all this effort for something I'm literally going to throw away. Okay, this missile actually looks like a missile now, and I think it's ready. So, I'm just going to save in case this goes horribly wrong. But, I think what we can do is we can turn on our thrusters. We have hydrogen. We have power. We have the gyro. We have the warheads. We just need to get into our, our rover here. And, uh, press fire. That was anticlimactic. Anticlimactic. Fire. Can you not... <laughs> Do you not know that there is a... Uh, come on, everything is named A. What, what's wrong with you? Recompile. Okay, I just maybe we just need to recompile the uh, the script. Okay, 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 we're good, we're good. I need to recompile it after adding the turret, I guess, or at least the name. So now, ready for launch. Make sure my uh, my spectator camera is ready to uh, to watch the impact here. And the missile careening in and destroying this. Ready to launch in three, two, one. Fire! Jeez, that takes off quickly. Where is the missile? It's coming in. Turrets are opening up. Missile's coming in. And missile died. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> it didn't make it. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. It took all that time, and the <laughs> missile didn't make it. Ah, <laughs> shit. Ah. <sighs> well, that's no fun. Uh, I guess I need a bigger missile, something with a bit more oomph to it, if I'm going to uh, to, to hit this thing. <laughs> See, this is what I get for doing all my testing versus a um, an inanimate object. I hadn't considered that the enemy could shoot back. So... Yeah... That's a thing. Hey, but at least I fired a missile. At least the missile worked. At least that happened. Ah, what else am I supposed to do here? Um, 
I need to besiege this somehow. So I think we're setting up siege camp and we're going to uh, build some form of siege weapons to shoot at it. Oh, oh, I could so pull off a splitsy catapult, couldn't I? I can make like a ballista and shoot some shit at it. And just blow the uh, ever loving crap out of that station. Ah. <sighs> Alternatively, I make a missile that actually has some armor to it. It would have to be a bigger missile. So if I made something, if I made like a bigger like ICBM sort of thing, I could do like a full, full-sized battery, full-size merge. I could actually use atmosph atmospheric engines instead of hydrogen. I could put on layers. I could actually put on, say, uh, or I probably want to still use hydrogen. Because hydrogen gives me a lot of thrust. And atmospherics take a lot of space. Because if I went, like, a full large hydrogen thruster as, like, my main thruster, I could, I could move a lot of heavy armor on the front of that. Like, that is a lot of thrust coming out of this thing. I still only need a small tank because it only needs to thrust for like 10 seconds. So I don't need a lot of extra of extra thrust to do it. But I could fire a much larger missile and uh, have a lot more armor layering on it. And that would hopefully be enough for me to break through their defenses. Because we have to get past all of these turrets all of them in order to land a shot on that base <sighs> well hey this was the experimentation stream or experimentation episode I think we need to redesign our approach here I think in the meantime sitting out here in the open is not good for us I'm just going to cut this back and we're going to because uh, I'll probably reposition all of this as well into um, probably I could probably move the scout drone and I could make myself quite literally an ICBM launching platform right here at the very back I like that make myself a little ICBM thing and I could build myself a much larger missile that would go a lot faster and not get shot down as quickly. And possibly, ooh, I've got a good idea. I can put little wings on the missile and I can put decoys on the wings. So that way they shoot off the wings first and then the main missile body hits and gets through. Then I can blueprint that and because I should be able to set up like a, uh, um, I should be able to set up a welder on the back of this? If I set up a welder back here, sort of like pointing off the end like that, and I set up the missile right there, I could have the welder build the majority of the missile every time for however many launches I'll need. And then I just need to stockpile a bunch of resources as to what I need to use to build the missiles and then I can just be like launch rebuild off a projector launch rebuild off a projector launch and just do it over and over again and then bombard that place from a distance okay okay I have a new goal we are not gonna leave this area until this base is rubble or yeah until this base is rubble so we're gonna pull away for now you've won today mr. base but we are going to go somewhere where we can find some more power as we are chewing through. We do have some ice, but we're chewing through our ice here as we are rebuilding our hydrogen. And we've got some iron nearby, which is excellent. I'll GPS that. We'll have plenty of resources available in the local area to uh, build our missiles. But I'm off to find a little bit of ice, a place to stop up, and we will 
continue to design our missiles. And when we come back next episode, it will be the bombardment. It will commence. <laughs> but not a very uh, exciting finale to this episode. It's the I'll get you next time feeling. But we'll do it. We'll get him next time. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Good hunting out there, fellow space engineers. <laughs>